For those of you weary travelers and perpetual night owls just tuning in, welcome. You, my loves, are tuned into The Host. Thank you for carving out a piece of your evening for us. And for not carving your name into trees. You know, there have been several complaints about rampant tree carvings in the area lately. Apparently, what's old is new, and experts are worried that millennials are destroying the ability of forests to withstand drought conditions during fire season. And here I thought the fire problem was because of those recent anti-witch burning protests. Anywho, for further questions, please contact an arborist. What's that? Yes, I know. Thanks, Dana. Yes, I'm moving on. Well, friends, it looks like our next caller is Alex. See, that's a nice, concise name. I believe four letters is the recommended carving length if you are going to vandalize. Yeah, yes, right. Dana, moving on. So, Alex, what can I do for you? Hi, thanks for taking my call. That's why we're here. How can I help you tonight? So this weird thing happened recently. And I was trying to, well, I've been having a hard time convincing other people how weird it was, and I wanted to sort of get someone else's take. I see. And what is it that happened? Well, the other day we had this big thunderstorm. Ah, I love a good autumnal storm. Yeah, so I looked out the window, and after the rain died down, and I noticed the bulb in my lantern was dim. I have one of those glass lanterns sitting outside my house. It's like a glass box that screws into a long pole. I'm familiar with a lantern. Well, people get confused when I tell them about it. Not me, caller. Your host is very sharp. Sure. So I went to check on it because the bulb was low and I thought, that's funny because I just changed it like three days before. You only have to change those bulbs once a year. But this one only lasted three days. That was my question. I thought it seemed off, so I went to check. But when I got there, I found the weirdest thing. (laughs) Alex? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about it, and I still can't, uh... Anyway, so I looked inside the glass, and there was this frog. Well, I mean, it may have been a frog. It might have been a toad. I don't really know the difference. You know, I actually know a lot about this. Um, Frogs, in fact, have long, delicate legs and smooth skin, while toads have short, stubby legs and a thick, coarse skin type. So, probably a frog. But the thing is, it was inside the glass. Inside of it. And burnt to a crisp. I mean, completely charred. I'm sorry, Alex. I'm sure that was a difficult experience for you. Death can be a real challenge for most people. Even the death of an animal one does not know. No, 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 no. See, everyone thinks I'm having a hard time with it because it was gross, which it was, or because the thing died, which it definitely did, but I just need someone to acknowledge that it was weird. I mean, how did the frog get inside of the glass? It's a lantern. It's a bulb completely encased in glass. There are no openings. Hmm. That is strange. It's crazy. I can't sleep. I've been zoned out at work. Jeff thinks I'm nuts. He wants me to see a therapist. It certainly sounds like this incident has become a disruption to your life. Now tell me, who's Jeff? Oh, my boyfriend. He casually wrote the name and number of a shrink on a sticky note this morning and put it on my purse. That's definitely direct. (laughs) Has Jeff recommended therapy prior to this frog situation? Never. I mean, he thinks everyone should be in therapy, but he hasn't actually suggested it to me before. He's really judgmental, though. Kevin says I'm fine. Oh, uh, Kevin? And Kevin is... My boyfriend. He says I should take the frog out and throw it away. Like, that will cure me and get rid of the thoughts. I told him I'm not touching that thing. It's gross and weird and probably cursed or something. So, Alex, to clarify, you have two boyfriends. Is that right? Uh, No judgment. I just want to be sure I'm clear. Well, there's Jeff and Kevin and Roberto. Three. Wonderful. Look at you, Miss Progressive. Not to pry, but do they all know about each other? They're all my boyfriend. Yeah, they are. But are they all aware of each other? Or aware that you have multiple men in your life? I only have one man in my life. Uh Uh-huh. But when you say they're all your boyfriend, you mean you are dating three men? Three men who are collectively my boyfriend. Huh. Uh, What's that? Uh, Hold hold on on one second, Alex. Uh, Dana is trying to tell me something. Oh, uh, Dana's asking how does the light bulb go in the lantern if there are no openings? 
Okay, good question. So technically the top opens, but it snaps down. When it's closed, it doesn't even leave a crack. Right. Um, but so I'm clear, when you're with Jeff, Roberto is... Jeff. Oh, interesting. And if Jeff heard the name Roberto, he would think... How would I know? I can't read his thoughts. Why are you stuck on this? Could you humor me for a moment? Um, I do have an inkling that this could be at the heart of something going on here. Is this change in Jeff and the gang a, a mental shift, like dissociative identity disorder, or... No, it's physical, too. Can you elaborate? Look, today his name is Jeff. He's got brown hair and blue eyes. Other days, he's Kevin and blonde. Sometimes he's Roberto and tall and athletic and pigeon-toed. There's no science to it. He changes spontaneously. I can never predict who I'm going to get when I get home from work, but he's my boyfriend and I love him. Now, do you... Oh, your boyfriend's a shapeshifter. That's amazing. I've never actually met a shapeshifter or had a call about one. Does he just, like, change all the time? No, shapeshifting is not a thing. It's like being a human chameleon, pretending to be different people that they're not, like the physical embodiment of a liar. Even the idea is creepy. My boyfriend is just a person who changes sometimes into one of two other people. Have you seen him change? He can feel it coming on and prefers to be alone when it happens. Usually he goes to the bathroom so he can have some privacy. It's awkward for him, you know? So no, I haven't. But I've definitely seen him walk through a door as one person and walk back out as another. It even happened when he was in the shower and I was washing my face at the sink. He couldn't hold it back. It sounded a little painful for him, to be honest. But obviously the more important thing here is the frog. Sure. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. It defies the laws of physics, right? Even if there was a crack in the glass or at the latch, you can't fit something larger than a crack through a crack. And it was a big frog. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Dana is suggesting maybe the frog has always been in the lantern. No, Dana, I think she would have noticed that when she changed the bulb earlier in the week. I've considered it. But no, I'm sure I would have seen a living frog or a dead one, even if it was a tadpole size and the storm somehow made it spontaneously balloon to full grown. So did Jeff, Kevin, Roberto explain how he got this condition? I mean, was he born with it? Ugh. When we first started dating, he explained that it was something that's been happening to him his whole life. He's never known why, and now that we live together, I can see it's not an easy thing for him. He could change it any time. It sounds like this is a pretty big part of his life. I have to ask, Alex, do you want to see him change? I've offered once or twice to be there to help him and everything, but he said he didn't want me to, and I'm fine with that. I don't know. Part of me feels like it could be really gross to look at. What would be gross? His body? His body changing. I'd rather not see it. I have to tell you, Alex, it alarms me that you live with someone who isn't comfortable changing in front of you. And it sounds like you aren't comfortable with him being him or them or whatever the preferred pronoun may be. Uh, going all in for a relationship is a big deal, but at some point you have to cross the threshold of trust. And I feel like the two of you, or four of you, have a lot of work to do there. This is bullshit, and not why I called. Can we please focus on the problem? I don't know what to say about the frog thing, Alex. It's weird. Thank you. Hello? Alex? Are you gone? <sighs> Dana has written quantum tunneling. Dana, don't be ridiculous. Did we lose Alex? Right. Well, callers, I don't know about you, but Alex's love life situation gives me a strange kind of anxiety. Relationships have to be based on trust, and if you can't trust your partner enough to be yourself with them, then you really do have to ask yourself, what's the point? Also, I didn't want to admit this, but I have a weird sensation of, well, doubt about the whole story. Dana, do you think there are three men in her apartment playing some sort of long con on her? Should we be concerned about her safety? I don't want to invalidate her situation, but what's that? Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dana's telling me to move on, so let's table that one, I guess. Oh. Uh, oh, and 
Uh, that's really bugging you, isn't it? <laughs> if you listeners have any theories about the frog lantern thing, please write in. Dana would love to discuss. <laughs>